my friends bought a house and they asked if I could build them a dining table. I said yes. The reason I'm, I'm nervous about it is because, you know, I've been, I've been into woodworking, just picked it up maybe about a year ago, and I've never worked with any expensive hardwood before. I'm on my way right now to Ganal Lumber to pick up some red oak. So I thought I'd just document the whole experience. Woo! We're gonna drive into the lumber yard. Quarter red oak. Trying to pick up the best pieces for this project and also try to save some money. After picking out the eight quarter red oak that I wanted to use, it was time to get all the wood loaded in the car. And this was not a small task, especially this 15 inch wide, eight foot long piece of red oak. It was super heavy, but eventually got everything in the car and it was time to head home. It was at this point I realized that I wasn't going to be able to run this through the table saw by myself, so I forwent the straight edge cutting jig laid out the wood to see how the grain patterns looked and this red oak looked beautiful. Next was to lay out all my cutting lines to try to avoid some of the cracks in the wood. And after that, I brought the wood over to the miter saw to cut it down to size. Here I'm using my Hercules miter saw from Harbor Freight and this thing cut through it like it was butter. Love using this miter saw. This is one of my colleagues, Jeff. I drove the Red Oak over to his place because he owns a really nice jointer and I also just wanted the opportunity to learn from someone that's been woodworking longer than myself. So here we are laying down all the Red Oak to figure out what grain pattern we wanted to use for the table to make sure the tones matched as well as the grain. Once we found something we liked, it was time to move on to the table saw. And this is why it probably wouldn't have been possible for me to do the straight edge jig by myself. This lumber was so heavy, I needed uh, someone's help just to run it through a table saw. Yeah, not too bad. But then was the fun part, bringing it through a jointer which I've never used before. And it was so satisfying to see that piece of lumber go all the way through, knowing it would become a perfect edge at the end. When I brought the wood back to my workshop, I noticed that when I laid it out, there's a bow and a couple pieces of the lumber that created this little bump. And so the plan is to get some scrap 2x4s to make some calls using some packing tape and hopefully clamp it up during the glue up so it can get this bow right out. Once all the calls were made, it was the moment of truth. Time to test out if this was actually going to get this bow out of the wood. And as you can see from that slow-mo, it got rid of it perfectly. It made it completely straight, and it made me really excited to move on with the glue up. <laughs> Felt like it was a race against the clock to try to get the boards together and all the clamps in place before any of the glue started to set. All right, I'm gonna let that dry overnight. The next night, it was time to see how the calls held up, and after knocking them out of place and taking a look, they worked perfectly. So I undid all the clamps and got ready to repeat the process with the third board. After getting the boards glued up, I had to move these three pieces that were glued together, and I probably should have waited for someone because it was so heavy, and the pipes were giving me a ton of difficulty. Proud of myself for not throwing a piece of 2 by 4 out the window. Eventually, got through it, it was time to glue up these two boards together. The next morning, I enlisted my wife's help this time of moving the red oak around, only to learn a new lesson as to why you don't wear flip flops in your garage. Ah, that fell on my foot! <laughs> Don't be like me, wear shoes when you're in the garage, and ask for help when you're moving around heavy pieces of wood. I made six new long calls that ran the width of the table, ran out of packing tape, had to take some tape from some of these older calls I wasn't using anymore, and then it was time for the final glue up to get these two large pieces together. And once I was done with that, it was time to let it dry overnight. 
Once the glue dried and the clamps were removed, I went ahead and busted out my cutting edge guide, which worked awesome with my circular saw, and it was only 10 bucks. It was on sale, so I decided to go for it. Once I was done with that side, I went to the other, set my straight edge cutting guide and my circular saw, went ahead and cut the other side. Once everything was cut to size, it was time to start doing a ton of sanding. So I busted out my belt sander and used it almost like it was a hand plane. I really need to get a sharpening system for my hand plane and learn how to restore them because that probably would have saved me a ton of time. I probably sanded maybe a sixteenth of an inch in certain places, which made the belt sander super helpful, but man, it was a lot of sanding. Once I felt like I had everything pretty level, I put the belt sander away and bust out the random orbit sander, and then it was time for more sanding, and more sanding, and more sanding. Even though sanding isn't one of my most favorite things to do, it feels really good when you do so much sanding and find your project totally flat. Then it was time to flip over the table and I didn't realize that I had so much dry glue squeeze out that had to be cleaned up. So I took a dull chisel and started to clean up all the dry glue squeeze out in between the joints. And then I sanded the whole thing down just like the top. Once I was done with that, it was time to cut the table down to the right width. This thing was starting to look more like a table. Something that I didn't record is that I took the sander to round off the edges of the table, and I took a round over a bit to the bottom. Then I got too impatient to wait for someone to help me with the table, so I decided to flip it by myself, which felt a little crazy. Oh no. Why can't my arm be longer? Oh, this vice. Oh. Oh. After getting the table flipped over, it was time to take a round over a bit with my router all the way around the top. I think it's time I invested in dust collection. I don't know, what do you think? Once I was done with the router, I went ahead and grabbed some sandpaper to sand around the perimeter of the table. I didn't want to use the sander in case I dipped the sander at an angle and chipped a piece of the edge out. That would have been a huge bummer. But went ahead and did that around the table, and then it was time to get some epoxy ready to fill in the holes in the table. So here I'm just using some 5 minute epoxy with some black dye that I got from Amazon and I just cut open a plastic cup that I had in the garage, made a quick stir stick and it was time to mix the, the epoxy with the dye together and start filling in these holes. The reason I'm using black dye for this project is because this table is going to be stained a classic gray. So I figured that it would have a better finish to it rather than using clear epoxy and having the holes look more apparent. Once I filled in all the holes in the tabletop with a black epoxy, it was time to let it set and get ready to sand with 80 grit, 120 grit, 220 grit. Wipe everything down with a tack cloth and get ready to stain and finish it. Here I am applying the stain and I made a huge mistake. This is supposed to be classic gray, but because I didn't give the can a good stir before using it, all the gray pigments were at the bottom of the can, and it came out completely natural. Which, it actually looks really beautiful, but uh, I wanted to make sure that my friends got the color that they wanted. So then it was off to mixing different grays and whites together until I was able to get the right tone that I wanted. Good. What ended up getting the color that I needed was mixing one part simply white with one part classic gray. Once I got the right color combo, it was time to stir my stain and pour it onto the table so I could finish staining this table before applying finish. After letting the stain sit for about five minutes, I came back to wipe off all the excess before putting on my finish and I let it sit in the garage for about three days. Once I knew the stain was completely dry, here I am stirring my finish and applying it to the table, putting on three coats and sanding in between.
for the last coat, it was really, really light. Just the extra finish that was left over from my rag. So my video started to get really long, so I decided just to scrap all the footage of making the legs and just show them to you and explain how I made it. So here the legs are made from 4x4 Douglas fir. Everything is cut at a 10 degree angle. So the legs over here on the left, and, on the right and the left, the top and the bottom are parallel 10 degree angles. The middles are trapezoids. Glued them together and put wood filler, which is still drying. And as you can tell here, I use a half inch drill bit so I could get two and a half inch wood screws in between here and then plugged it with dowels and wood filler. So basically all I need to do now is sand it all down, paint it, finish it, and then I am done with this project. And voila, just like that, the table is done. I delivered to my friends, they love it. And I attached the tabletop to the legs using tabletop fasteners, as you can see here. And sorry, I know that was a really abrupt way to end it, but didn't want the video to go too much longer. Um, and as I said before, I am still new to woodworking, maybe a year and a half in, and there's probably a ton of things that I could have done better on this project. Please comment below, help me out. I'd love to continue to grow. So thanks so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed.